Dr. Carl Henry, the founder and editor of Christianity Today, sent out a questionnaire to what he called 20 of the leading intellectual preachers in the country. There must be more than 20 because I didn't get one anyhow. <clears throat> and uh, the, the question that he sent out was this, what do you see for the Church of Jesus Christ by the year 2000? I remember only one of the replies, it was given by Elton Trueblood, the Quaker philosopher. And Elton Trueblood said this amazing thing, by the year 2000, the church will be a conscious minority surrounded by an arrogant militant paganism. I swallowed that hook, line and sinker and woke up with mental and I think spiritual indigestion about two o'clock in the morning. The world, by the year 2000, the church will be kind of crunched in, and we, we shall be a conscious minority surrounded by an arrogant militant paganism. And then I began to realize, well, you better back up a bit. I think we need to remind ourselves that Christianity was not served up to the world on a silver platter. Christianity was born in a sophisticated totalitarian society. And when Christianity was born, it was born uh, in, in a slave system that dominated almost the whole world. I used to think sometimes again of when we stood on the southern lip of the Grand Canyon and, and there read the legend, which I'm sure you've read, it, it's fixed on one of the rocks that this is the Grand Canyon and uh, it gives some statistics about it. The, 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 the yellow ribbon in the district, uh, in the distance is the Colorado River. It's uh, seven miles away, it's about 350 feet wide, it's about uh, 45 feet deep and so forth. And if you look down and you, you, you see the ground level of the canyon, the walls on either side are a mile high. And I don't know why, except it seemed the Lord said to me, well, h how would a child get out of that situation? A little child couldn't uh, surely swim the Colorado River, a man couldn't do that even. Uh, how, how could it scale the walls on either side? They're almost perpendicular. And immediately they came to my mind, uh, it was a picture of the early church. The early church was walled in on one side with the mightiest military machine in history, the Roman power. It was wall walled in on this side with Greek intellectualism. It was blocked ahead by uh, the Jewish monopoly, as they thought, of, of, of the gospel. And you know, one of the things that really hurts today there's a snobbishness even in Christianity. If you don't have a degree, I don't have any degree. After all, you can have 32 and still be frozen. <clears throat> but uh, those men who turn the world upside down have no colossal intellectual capacity. They have no get, g g great financial backing. They have no social standing. They were about the most despised men in and around Jerusalem, and yet they broke out somehow and they, the, the later, the, it was said that they turned the world upside down. I think at least once a week, sometimes I think of it once a day, where uh, uh, Dr. J.B. Phillips, that gave us the Phillips New Testament, one day turned around really, rather wearily in his office and he picked up a book which happened to be the Acts of the Apostles, which happened to be in Greek, which he happens to understand very well. And he read through to about the fifth chapter, and then he summarized it this way. This is the church of Jesus Christ before it became fat and out of breath by prosperity. This is the church of Jesus Christ before it became muscle-bound by over-organization. This is the church of Jesus Christ where they didn't gather together a group of intellectuals to study psychosomatic medicine, they just healed the sick. This is the Church of Jesus Christ where they did not say prayers, but they prayed in the Holy Ghost. There's a vast difference. The tragedy in our colleges and seminaries right now, we turn men out because they know the Word of God. That's never going to move the world. The question is not whether they know the Word of God. The question is do they know the God of the Word? And just to give a man a, a, a license to preach because he has some ac academic ability and then he can frame the little thing on the wall, you know, to say he got his degree because his grandmother put him through uh, college, you know, and he likes to show this thing off. To do that is like giving a blind man a driving license. If he doesn't know God, why is he in this business? I come to this conclusion uh, recently about two things. We've got to make up our minds that this book is absolute or absolute. 
Entitled up the Africa for our generation of forget it. Get it. Get it. Get it.